we really wanted to make this a little bit different to our normal weekly webinar. And instead of focusing on things that are depressing, to actually celebrate something. So um, we wanted to hear from a number of our board members just and, and make this a bit interactive at the end, but just to really hear why you chose a profession. It's International Economic Development Week. Uh, so we want to hear from, I think we're going to hear from six board members here today, but just why they chose a the profession, why they stay in the profession. Uh, just a little bit about that background. So, um, and at the end, we'll hopefully have some time for questions. So I think we will get started with our new president, uh, Mary Lee Pryor, if you want to kick it off. Thanks, Leanne. Uh, as president of the Economic Developers of Alberta, I am very excited to personally welcome everybody today as we celebrate International Economic Development Week, uh, our profession, and you, the professionals. I think you are our frontline, get her done, boots on the ground, jack of all trades. Uh, what more can I say? You represent our communities and uh, across Alberta and across, I guess, Canada and the world, and you should be very proud. Uh, we are going to hear from, as Leanne said, from a few of our economic developers on the board, their experiences, uh, what their passions are, how they got into economic development, why they've stayed in economic development, and particularly some of you may be questioning why you're still in economic development during COVID-19. But <laughs> um, I guess that's why we're on a Zoom. Um, for myself personally, I've been in economic development for 10 years. Uh, I really had to think about my passion because there's several of them, I think. But uh, for me, I think it is working and building relationships with the people uh, in our community and the businesses themselves to assist in finding and creating solutions for any issues that they may have. And I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm finding it super hard to stay in an office and just be on Zooms. I'm uh, walk down Main Street and talk to people. So it's been very different. Uh, looking forward to hopefully getting out and about a little more. Um, and with that, uh, I'll turn it back to Leanne. Um, and I encourage anybody else who isn't speaking today to, I invite you to jump on the chat. Um, and as you're listening to other stories about economic development and how they've stayed in the profession, tell us about your story. And uh, we, we want this to be interactive. So back to you, Leanne. Uh, we'll start maybe with Trevor. Trevor Lewington. Trevor's our uh, vice president this year and incoming president. And so, Trevor, why don't you tell us your story? Why, why you're still in this field and what got you involved? Well, interestingly enough, I know we're here because it's International Economic Development Week, but selfishly, it's actually my fifth anniversary in this role. So I'm celebrating a bit of a milestone this week as well. And uh, if you told me five years ago that I'd be in this role and having so much fun, I would have told you you were crazy. I sort of fell into this job much by accident, and it's turned out to be one of the best jobs I've ever had. So, you know, with five years service under my belt, I'm a relative newbie to the space. Um, but, you know, my previous life in industry, I've owned private businesses, I've been an entrepreneur, I've worked in government. So all of those things, interestingly enough, seem to have prepared me for this current role. And I think I wouldn't be as effective as I am today without having all of those broad experiences. And that's the part that I like is that it draws on all of my previous experiences. I really think economic development is a culmination of all of those things. I love the fact that the projects we get involved with have a real impact on people's lives. They have a real impact on our communities and that's big and small. Obviously the big industrial projects are exciting because there's ribbon cuttings, there's fanfare. Those are the big ones that get the attention but it's the small things that make a big difference. So let me give you an example. As a part of this COVID response, we started a social media campaign called In This Together YQL, YQL being Lethbridge's airport code. So between the Chamber of Commerce, my organization, as well as our downtown uh, business revitalization zone, the three of us got together and we started this campaign. So consumers, residents were encouraged to tag their favorite local business and with, when they did that, use the hashtag in this together YQL. We've been randomly collecting those and people have the opportunity to win actually a $100 gift card for the business that they tagged in. So it was a fun way to get people supporting local business, helping promote local business, 
but also get people interacting in a socially distanced way over the internet uh, to promote what's going on in our community. Now there's simultaneous to that, there's a small group in our community, uh, it's a number of young female professionals, and every Christmas they do something called the snowball effect. And they generate some charitable giving, they do some great work, and so they decided that they wanted to take the hashtag and run with it. And in fact, the hashtag has now become a collectible t-shirt. And so through t-shirt sales, they've managed to raise almost $30,000 for the two Lethbridge food banks. So it's an example of a social media campaign that we started that took on a bit of its life. We were having some fun promoting local business. Another group sort of took the principle, ran with it, and they've done something that's impacting the broader community. And so that to me is the fun of economic development. It's the power of partnerships. And despite a global pandemic, that's why I'm still in it. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk. Um, happy anniversary. Thank that's you. awesome. I think most people you'll hear, they just kind of fell into it. Um, so it's an, it's an interesting profession. I think Shane Olson uh, from Strathcona County. Shane just joined the board. I know you've been a member for a long time in various communities, but uh, how about we hear from you next? Sure. Um, yeah, so for me, I don't know if I really fell into the profession. I started in 2002. I was uh, quite young at the time. I was around 23 or 24, so uh, 18 years ago. And I was a FedNor intern, and that's how I sort of got into the business in Thunder Bay with the federal government. They had a program. So my first year, I was the film and multimedia coordinator for $13.25 an hour uh, back in 2002. Uh, I did that for a full year uh, with Development Thunder Bay at the time. In fact, that's where I met, uh, I'm not sure if he's on the call, but I met Harold Wilson that year. He was the Regional Economic Development Coordinator for the, the Regional Alliance at that particular time. Um, so I worked hard, you know, it's just working hard and getting to know different people within the profession. I think the key thing is, is to align yourself with good mentors over the years as you go in the profession. Uh, I was fortunate to work under a number of different people. Uh, Richard Poehler, who's been in economic development for 35 years and now works for FedNor in Northwest Ontario, uh, Derek Brandt, Nancy Creighton, um, now Jerry Gabinet and others. Um, so being involved, I think, in the profession, getting training, attending conferences is really quite key. Um, what I enjoy the most is the intrinsic value. So all of the different things around starting a business, selling land. When I was in Okotoks, I had the chance to sell. Uh, $15 million worth of municipal properties that were no longer needed as part of an old business park. So I really like those kinds of projects where we can get creative working with the planners and engineers. So I'm kind of a rare breed. I've really developed my career as a bit of a municipal specialist working with municipal councils and committees, uh, understanding the politics of it, I guess, and learning the ropes of how to deal with the various bureaucracy and red tape that sometimes can happen and how can you still be creative in that environment. Uh, so uh, this is my third community now from Thunder Bay to Okotoks, Okotoks to Strathcona County. Um, I think what I enjoy the most is helping the small businesses and some of the folks when we are working on an investment deal with information around marketing, some of the neat things that come out of that. And, you know, the long-term projects that stick around, like landing a Costco store. I was able to do that deal in Okotoks, started in 2007 and it opened in 2010. So just learning about life cycles and how long these projects actually take to get off the ground. But that's a business now that forever and a day supports the community, indeed attracts other visitors to the community uh, and that sort of thing. I also like community economic development initiatives. So working on things like physician recruitment, I've done that in the past, it's quite fun. Uh, helping actually bring new doctors to community and welcoming them when they come to the community, working with committees around uh, ideas such as that. Uh, so I think, you know, for the most part in our profession, we need to be open-minded willing to change because there's one thing that's for sure that's going to happen is change especially in the municipal world you have to be flexible and, and willing to adapt uh, as we go so those are a few thoughts i have uh, on the profession uh, i'll continue to be in it it's i'm fully entrenched now i think i've gone down the road too far so be in it for a while yet there's no going back now no going yeah. back. <laughs> you you drank the Kool-Aid. Uh, so I think we will turn to Ben, Ben Young. Ben is with the Town of Tabor. Ben is actually he's serving his second term on the board. Uh, so Ben, why don't you kick your, your uh, stuff off next? Sure. Thanks, Leanne. Uh, hi, everybody. 
Uh, yeah, so as Leanne said, I'm on the board. I work for the town of Tabor. I think I might be the least uh, year experienced uh, member of the board. I'm at about four years in economic development now. Uh, loved every minute of it. So I might just talk a little bit about one of my unique experiences that kind of opened my eyes to what the world of economic development really can be all about. Um, one of my first projects when I first started in economic development was to support um, our local pumpkin festival that had been running for several years and they always was run by just an individual family and their friends and volunteers. And it got to the point where they just couldn't sustain the festival. They couldn't keep doing it themselves. They didn't know how to keep doing it. And yet it was one of those really crucial pieces of our agricultural heritage in Tabor to continue doing it. So we worked with them to, you know, create sponsorship packages, get local businesses involved and really morphed it into a bigger festival. And kind of what that showed to me was that it was, you know, economic development, is not just about the business attraction like Trevor and Shane had said it's great to get a Costco you know find a Costco or sell a bunch of land but you know the kind of the community economic development side really piqued my interest because that one pumpkin festival that kind of was just out on someone's farm you know it became a community event it's a celebration of cultural heritage it's a tourism draw it's an opportunity for local businesses to participate in an event it you know it's all these different things put together so for me that's kind of what excites me about economic development is that every day is kind of different. There's always different projects to work on, different ways that we can contribute to our communities and have a really profound impact on our communities. So that's what really gets me out of bed in the morning to work in economic development. Uh, that and getting to know the unique and interesting other EDOs we have, like the conversations we have here and listening to other people's stories. I, economic developers come from all sorts of backgrounds and with all different experiences. So I know everyone kind of always says economic developers are never stop talking, but it's true because we always like to get together and talk and we always have different stories to share. So that's kind of what really gets me going in economic development and excited to hear what everyone else is doing. Thanks. That's great. I do tell when I'm telling sponsors about our conference, they said, well, they're not exactly wallflowers. They kind of talk a lot. Um, so yeah. That's part of, part of the good part about it. Uh, what about Martin Neville? Martin, you're serving your second term on, on the board as well. So do you want to go next? Uh, absolutely. Thank you, Leanne. And uh, hello to everyone from uh, Lethbridge County here. I'm Martin Abel. I'm the EDO. I've been here for about uh, seven years. And before that, about three and a half years in the town of Fort McLeod. So about 10 years, 10 years and counting in the profession. And uh, like Trevor and some of the other uh, economic development officers, I kind of fell into the profession, but it was one of those lucky falls or lucky bounces because like many of you, I feel I've uh, come into the profession that really is my niche. Sorry, Martin, I don't hear you right now. I don't know if everyone else is having a problem. Ben, uh, Shane, Mary Lee have spoken very well about it. Um, and uh, so I certainly echo what they've said. But uh, I think for me too, or the aspect that I'd add to it is um, the fact that you're building something. Um, and I feel that over the seven years I've been in economic development at Lethbridge County, I can see how our business community has grown, has matured, has expanded. And similarly in the region, um, I see how the regional economy is growing and building. And we've got some great regional projects on the go, which allows me to work with people like Trevor and Ben uh, on it. In my case, and I think for all of us in economic development, I feel that, yeah, I'm building something that's important. It's important for the citizens of Lethbridge County in the region. It's important for the business community and it will have a lasting legacy. And that's really rewarding for me. And I think it's something that we can really all take um, meaning from as economic development officers, especially in this economic development week. So that's all that I have. And uh, thank you, uh, Leanne and the EDA uh, board for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts. Thanks, Martin. Um, I know, uh, and, and for those of you who weren't on the agenda to say, you know, to present today, to tell us about it, please just let us know in the chat box if you want to tell us your story. And Nancy will, will uh, be kind of calling on you after we're done the first few uh, 
uh, people's overviews from our board. Um, next, I think uh, the last one we had scheduled was Pat, and Pat Nickel has, this is uh, your first term on the board, but I, I know Pat, you're going to speak a little bit about uh, why you are in the profession, but also you have a special announcement too as well today, so why don't you go next? Uh, okay, I wasn't actually expecting to talk about me, but um, so I think very similar to some of you, I kind of fell into the profession as well. Uh, I was a, with the Department of Tourism for many, many years up in the Yukon, and uh, uh, obviously that has an economic development but uh, component to it, but it uh, was for the province or for the territory as opposed to a, a municipality. So a little bit different uh, than when I came back to uh, Alberta, um, kind of fell into my lap with Redwater and uh, I've loved it ever since. I didn't realize how much uh, I had been missing. Um, the thing that I think I like the most about it, and I've said this many times, is economic developers, and especially in this region, uh, we are a family. And, uh, and that kind of leads me into what I'm gonna be talking about in a minute, but um, uh, partnerships and putting people together and making, growing and, and uh, developing um, ideas that you actually see come to fruition is what really gets me out of the bed out of bed in the morning. Um, that's probably uh, one of my my biggest loves, but also one of my biggest challenges, as we all know, <clears throat> especially now. Um, so, in saying that, uh, something that is near and dear to my heart is mentorship. And Shane spoke to this as well in his little uh, dialogue. Um, we are very excited as the EDA board to introduce the uh, new mentorship program um, that is for EDA members. Uh, as you heard around the board, there's so many different areas that everyone touches on and everyone has their own little niche. And you take that with you in whatever job and whatever municipality you go to. Um, Devin definitely has seen, and so is as Redwater, and I know that Nicole Krill is from Redwater, um, Everyone who comes into the, the new role of economic development, they bring all of their expertise with them. Not everybody has that opportunity. Some communities are big, some communities are small, some have a lot of development, some are very tourism focused. How do you then as an individual figure out how to do it? It's, it's not like there's not a manual for us in economic developers. We have to find ways and anytime I've gone into a new role, I look for those mentors in any way I possibly can. It's not always within my organization either. Economic development is rarely within your own organization. And I have been very, very fortunate to um, have some of my fellow colleagues take me under their wing and say, you know what, I see you struggling or, or and I'm, I'm open to that. I mean, heck, if somebody sees I'm struggling, I, I want to hear about that. But I thought we thought that th this would be a great opportunity for us to actually pair up people who are in need. Because you know what, it's kind of unnerving to call up your colleague and go, um, by the way, I have an affirming clue what I'm doing in this and this and this. So instead of making that uncomfortable phone call, how about we actually pair some people up? Um, and it, you don't, you know, it doesn't have to be that you have been, you're brand new to the industry uh, or into economic development. Maybe you've been around for a while, but all of a sudden you have a new role and you're taking on more tours or more development or, or whatever that looks like, um, you know, in various aspects. We would love for you guys to, on the mentor side and the mentee side, put your name in and let's see, you know, how we compare. I know we have a couple people who have already put their name in to be mentors. Um, I'm not sure if I have anybody on the mentee side. So um, if you know anybody, and again, another reason for uh, you to become an EDA member, because this is uh, for EDA members um, to, uh, to pair up. And that's all I have. That's great, Pat. And thanks for all the work you did on, the, on developing the mentorship program. I know you, Mary Lee and Jennifer, were working hard on this one. So thank you for, for doing that. And I think it'll be really valuable for our members. I know before um, I open it up to everybody, I, I forgot to call in Eleanor. Um, I, you get to do the grand finale here. So, so make it good. <laughs> no pressure at all. <laughs> Anyways, I want to start with just a huge shout out to our fellow economic developers. I know that 
this has been tough. We're in a pandemic. None of us have ever experienced this. We're having really tough conversations and dealing with challenging issues. And I know the pressure is on and the expectation. Our council sometimes want magic bullets. And I know that for some of you, that pressure is high. And so I, I want you to know that we're here, that we want to support you, that uh, you're doing an incredible job under extremely difficult uh, circumstances. So this is for you. This is us celebrating uh, you, but also know that we're here. So pick up a phone uh, and send an email to Pat's Point in Mentorship. That's what this program is really about, is to saying, I just need somebody to hear me uh, in the challenges that I'm facing uh, for the here and now. And like many of the stories you heard today, I kind of rolled into it. Uh, I followed my husband. I came to Canada in 1999. Uh, I was a human resource manager, and I thought, that's my profession. I'm sticking in, in that end. And then I followed my husband to Northern Alberta, and I'm like, where are you taking us? But he got a, a job as an airport manager. And I'm like, so what am I going to do in this small town in the middle of nowhere? I had no idea. This job came open uh, for uh, community uh, services. And I thought, okay, you know, administrative, I can do this, you know, if, if nothing else, no HR jobs. Um, and then within four months, so I worked for the manager of economic development. In four months, she left. And I'm like, okay, let's look at her job. I got management experience. I have a minor in international business. I think I can do this. And I rolled in and I remembered going to my year one economic development at the U of Waterloo. And they start off with this, Brock starts off with this big board about what do you do in economic development? And the list just grew and grew and grew. And I'm like, what did I get into? Oh my gosh, this is like never ending. This has no, uh, no finality. There's like, we're involved in everything. Uh, but I can say that as uh, in Northern Alberta, and that's not where I am currently, but um, in Northern Alberta, as you start to figure out what is it that your community needs, um, where, uh, where they need your, you to roll in, it, it differs so much. So I've never done land sales uh, because that's not where we we're at. There's plenty of land to be had and in Northern Alberta, that, that's what you could do. Uh, it might be something I get involved in here. And so I know that now I can call Shane and say, help me understand this because to Pat's point, I have no clue what I'm doing here. Um, but we learn and we grow in, in that process. And it was actually fun. So two years ago, I moved to Camor. Uh, in economic development and it was like I needed to do a complete 180 in where I needed to focus different community different challenges different focuses and I went back up north to visit friends and it was really exciting to see hey that business is there because of the work I did or um, even this playground from a community economic development and that placemaking element is as important as the business community is there because of the work I did and really exciting to see that you had uh, impact on, on forming a community and creating opportunities for people through the conversations we had. And so I think my biggest passion in life is to see people excel in what they're doing in business and, and in their personal life. Uh, so as a volunteer and in my work, I am able to do that. I'm able to pour into people and see them uh, reach their opportunity and maybe reach beyond where they think uh, they have capacity for, right? If they're just thinking a home mock and realizing, wait a minute, you have a product here that others want. How can we, we help you market that to a larger audience? And all of a sudden you see their eyes open going, I can do this. I just need to have these support systems in place. And so that's what wakes me up and that's what keeps me going even through the challenging conversations we're having now during a pandemic. And that's what makes me excited in economic development. Thanks, Eleanor. Well, that, that's the ones that we had scheduled, but we are always open. I don't know, Nancy, if anyone has said in the chat box, but open to others just joining okay. in and telling us your background and, and why you're in economic development. And maybe you even want to say, hey, Pat, I want to be a mentor uh, <laughs> or I need one. But uh, I, I could can call I on quick, some people. Can I do a Go quick ahead. shout out to my mentors? Because I was, yeah. that's the point. I had some amazing mentors when I started and really didn't know economic development. So, uh, a big shout out to Chris King and Natalie Gibson, who, when I started 10 years ago, uh, I had many, many long conversations with uh, Chris King in my office about how am I going to do this and uh, really appreciated that ability to just bounce off ideas and the opportunity that I now have to do that for others. 